Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill. My name is Pastor Josh, and I am the pastor here, and we are excited to be able to have you join us today, whether you're worshiping with us this morning or whether you're worshiping with us throughout the week. We are thrilled that you have decided to join us this week. I just want to let you know a little bit about what you can expect during the worship time this morning. We will have worship through some music uh, provided by Ellen and Miriam. We will have a call to worship. We will have a prayer time. We'll have a time for the chat with the, the children, uh, which is a time where I spend some time talking to the kids. And then we will uh, also worship through the reading of scripture and a message as we continue our Seeking Wisdom series. And we're learning from the different parables in the New Testament from the Gospels. Well, friends, we again are so happy that you are here with us, that you've decided to join us uh, today for worship. At this time, let us worship. This time we are going to participate in our call to worship. And how we participate in that is I will say the parts that are not in bold and then we invite you to say the parts that are in bold. So friends, let us participate in the call to worship. Magnify the Lord. Exalt God's holy name. How much can we praise God amidst so much suffering? God is Lord over all both good and evil. Only the saints can comprehend such things. The Lord hears the pleas of the perishing and transforms the suffering of the faithful into deeper joy. Restore our fortunes, O God, when calamity strikes. Magnify the Lord, you righteous of the Lord. We will exalt God's holy name. This time we will enter our prayer time. And how the prayer time works here is we will have a time where we will read the words together that are up on the bottom of the screen. And then after that, we will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. And those words are up on the screen if you don't know the words. Friends, let us pray together. God, our healer, source of everlasting mercy, give us the courage to cry out in our need. When the crowd seeks to silence us, as did blind Bar Bartimaeus outside Jericho, 
Give us wisdom to admit our limitations and accept our limited understanding as John did before us. Give us the confidence to sing your praises in the midst of fear and doubt, as the psalmist did in David's court. Grant us your healing balm, O God, that we may be truly made well and whole and follow you all the days of our lives. And now, as Jesus took time to teach the disciples, we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For the beauty of the earth. Well, kids, it's good to see you again. I have something with me this week that maybe you have uh, had to do because your parents have asked you to, or maybe you've done it on your own, or it was a part of a school project. But I have something that's very special to me this week, and I have a thank you card. And this thank you card happens to be from one of uh, the children at my last church in Milltown, and his name is Liam. And Liam wrote me this thank you card as I was uh, leaving Milltown to get ready to come here to St. Andrews. And Liam just wanted to say thank you, Pastor Josh, for all that you have done. And you know what? When I got that card, it was so special to me. And I was so thankful for the card. I'm going to talk with the adults today about, well, being thankful and what that means and what it means to be genuinely thankful. Do you know what the word genuine means? That means real. And so we're going to talk about what it means to be really, really thankful. See, I knew that Liam was really, really thankful because he took time to write that card to me. And I was so appreciative of that. So as we get ready to go today, we also have to say thank you to God. Because God gives us a lot of stuff. And so we can be very, very thankful to God. But it's important that we say thank you, not just with our words when we pray, but also in how we love each other and take care of each other. That's how we show we're thankful. Kind of like writing a thank you card. So maybe there's somebody this week that you can write a thank you card to. Maybe mom or dad or grandma or grandpa can help you figure out who to write a card to. All right, I will see you next week. Take care. 
Well, our scripture lesson this week comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 41 through 43, where Jesus tells the parable of the two debtors. And this is how the story goes. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces of silver to another. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That is right, Jesus said. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thankfulness. Well, there's a difference between genuine thankfulness and thankfulness that is not genuine, isn't there? And we can generally tell. Maybe somebody just says, thanks, but maybe somebody says, thank you. Or as I talked about in the children's chat, they take time to write a card to let you know how much they appreciate you and to say thank you. Thankfulness. It's an attitude that we should have as people. Jesus has a couple of things to say about that. But first, I want to share a story about a little boy. And he sat down at the dinner table. And as he sat down at the dinner table, he just took one look at his plate, offered a sigh, and then began to pray. A little boy, in his prayer, just simply prayed, God, the food doesn't look too good, but I'm going to give thanks anyway. Amen. <laughs> Very simple prayer. But I don't know that thanks was genuine in that humorous story, was it? It was just saying thank you because you kind of had to. It's not genuine thankfulness. Friends, we know genuine thankfulness when we hear it, when we see it, and also when we live it. Well, that's what Jesus talks about today in our parable or our story. See, what Jesus does is the story takes place early on in Jesus' ministry. Jesus has been invited over by a Pharisee. And we talked a little bit about them last week. Kind of celebrities during their time. They were people that loved the law. They were, I like to call them, church people. So Jesus goes over to Simon's house. When Jesus goes over there, well, Simon's kind of cold to Jesus. Simon doesn't wash Jesus' feet or have anyone in the house do it. Doesn't greet Jesus with a kiss. There's a number of things that happened during Bible times when you had a visitor over, especially someone who was viewed as a rabbi or a prophet, much like Jesus was. Simon just decided not to do or to have other people do. Why? Well, we don't really know. But what we do know is that this wasn't so much an invitation to dinner, more as putting Jesus on trial around the dinner table. So what winds up happening is in the midst of this dialogue, in the midst of this conversation around the dinner table, what would happen in Bible times is, and try to picture this, there would be people that would just come from the outside and join at the table. That's what happened regularly. So they could hear the conversation that was taking place. They could hear the stories that are taking place and they could learn. So a group of people walk in and one of the people that walks in is someone that frankly shouldn't be there. It's this woman. And it's a woman that's not in high regard. Many speculate that she's a prostitute. She was frowned upon, looked down on, scorned often. But here's this woman, comes in with a group of other people to hear Jesus. Well, when she hears Jesus, she becomes so overwhelmed that she begins to weep. She uses her tears in this expensive perfume to clean Jesus's feet, something that should have been done the moment that Jesus walked in through the door. 
Now Simon is thinking to himself, the Pharisee, it says in my text, if he were a prophet, surely he would know that this woman is a sinner. Basically, Jesus, you got to kick this woman out. But Jesus decides not to do that. And it's almost like Jesus can read Simon's mind. And then Jesus goes into this story. Well, two debtors. One had this debt of a year and a half salary. 500 pieces of silver. The other just 50. A tenth of it. Jesus asked the simple question. Who do you think was more grateful? Who do you think was more loving? Simon just replies, the one with the larger debt. Well, Jesus then responds, you're right. And then looks at the woman and says, you are forgiven. Your faith has forgiven you. You can go. There's a couple of things that we should learn from this text, from this passage. Because ultimately what it was, was, it was about Thanksgiving. It's about being an individual who lives a life, which we talked about last week, an attitude of gratitude. Simon didn't understand that. Jesus even points out to him all the things that he neglected to do for Jesus when Jesus walked through the door of his home. As we look at this story, we see this woman. This woman is just so thankful to be in the presence of Jesus. She's so thankful to be there, to be able to spend time with Jesus, to be around Jesus, to hear Jesus' teaching, that she becomes overwhelmed with emotion. She begins to cry. That's how thankful she is. It wasn't just her looking around at people saying, hey, look, I am thankful. What it was, it was her showing just how appreciative and thankful she was for Jesus and what Jesus had to say. Friends, where are you this morning? Are you caught up in the chaos of the day? Where you haven't taken time to simply celebrate and be thankful that we have the opportunity, even in the midst of online, to just be thankful for God's love and God's grace. Friends, it can be hard to have that attitude of gratitude. But the one thing that this story points out is that God is this God of infinite grace. This woman who was cast aside by society, uh, Jesus welcomed her in. She asked for forgiveness. She messed up. We mess up. And Jesus was there to say, you're loved, you're forgiven. And because of that, it demanded a response. Friends, when we experience God's love, when we experience God's grace, well, when we really experience it, it's life-changing. It should change how you talk. It should change the way that you act. It should change who you are as an individual for the better. Because when you experience forgiveness and you have a heart of thankfulness, well, it radiates like a light in the midst of darkness. It draws other people in. They can't help but be around you because you are different than what everyone else is or what everyone else expects. Where are you today? Do you have that heart of the woman that was so overcome with thankfulness for experiencing God's love, God's grace, that it just spilled out? Is that where you are today? Well, if not, maybe it's time to stop and reflect about where life is for you and look at the blessings that you have in your life. See, the woman was able to do that because she came prepared. Are you prepared this morning? 
Are you prepared to encounter Christ this morning? And maybe that's where the thankfulness has to start. See, this woman came to hear Jesus with the bottle of perfume ready to go. Yes, she may not have anticipated all of the emotions that came with it, but she came prepared. Prepared to encounter Christ. Prepared to experience something different. Prepared to be transformed. Is that where you are today? Friends, I don't know about you, but I need transformation sometimes in my life. But in order for us to experience that, well, we have to be a people that are prepared, don't we? We have to be a people that are ready to encounter Christ. We have to come with our own bottle of perfume, our own offering. We have to come with ourselves encounter Christ. Jesus wasn't ready to kick the woman out. No. Simon may have wanted her to be kicked out, but Jesus wasn't ready for that. She had experienced grace. She had experienced transformation. She was searching for what we all are searching for. Forgiveness, love, and hope. She found that in Christ. And it radiated out. So friends, there's a quote that uh, at one time G.K. Chesterton wound up sharing. And this is simply the quote. The most critical thing in life is whether you take things for granted or whether you take them with gratitude. G.K. Chesterton's right. And that's what Jesus is trying to say here. Are we experiencing God's love and taking it for granted? Not living any different with our lives? Or do we have these hearts of celebration, thanksgiving, gratitude, where it changes who we are as individuals for the better? I want to close this week by sharing a story with you about two boats, actually. The first boat was called the Lady Elgin. Lady Elgin was setting sail, and as she was setting sail, there was another boat that rammed into her, and it was the Augusta. Now, there was an individual who watched this happen, and as they watched this happen, it was towards the middle of winter, and the water is freezing. But this individual kept going back and pulling people out, so that way they could have their lives spared. Well, in the midst of doing this over and over and over again, it cost this individual his life. He wound up having health issues that were so detrimental from this particular thing and being in the water as cold as it was for so long, pulling people out, they passed away. When it came time for the funeral, it was discovered that not one person who had been saved took time to just say, thank you for saving my life. Now, we hear the story, we shake our heads and we say, how could you even do that? They, he saved their life. But friends, be careful how quickly you jump to conclusions because oftentimes we do it with God's grace, don't we? God's love and God's grace is transforming. It's life-changing and it's life-saving. Sometimes, well, we don't say thank you. We get too busy and caught up in our own lives or in what the world is worried about. But we forget to just simply stop and say thank you. So while we shake our heads at the story, sigh or roll our eyes at these individuals, what Jesus is saying here is, remember what I've done. Remember that cross that I died on. Friends, God's love and God's grace is right there for us every day. 
I pray that this week we can seek wisdom and go about the fact that, well, in the world, that it's so hard for people to say thank you, that we can live our lives and our words as people who are genuinely thankful. Because, friends, when that happens, and we experience that life-changing grace, well, it requires a response, a response of word and action. Friends, let's be a people of thanksgiving this week and show others exactly what thanksgiving looks like. Amen. Now thank we all our God. Friends, we have a couple of announcements this week, and the first is that we will have youth group uh, tonight, if you're watching this Sunday, uh, at the church at 7 p.m. till 8.15. We're encouraging people to wear costumes if they would like to youth group. We have a good group of teens, and we're inviting you to join us if you haven't. Youth group will meet every other week, so we meet uh, tonight and then two weeks from then. And so we invite you to join us for that if you are in grades 6 through 12, we invite you to come out at the church at St. Andrews in Cherry Hill at 7 p.m. And we'll look forward and we'll welcome you there. The second is, is that we have an information meeting next Sunday after worship for the missions trip to the Dominican Republic. It's been a mission here for a while, and so we invite those who are interested to be able to stay after church and to be able to join in and be able to participate. Again, that is next Sunday after church, we will have a time of being able to find out about missions trip. We also are resuming our Cherry Hill Food Pantry collections, and that will take place on the first Sunday of the month, which is Communion Sunday. And so we invite you to bring items for the food pantry here to church, and we will make sure that they get over there. Friends, that is the announcements that I have for this week. We are so happy that you decided to join us. Feel free, if you would like, to be able to contact the office with any questions that you might have. Friends, have a good week. Well, friends, as we enter the time for our tithes and offerings, one way that we have the opportunity of being able to say thank you not just through words, but through our deeds, is by giving back. 
God is a good and gracious God, and God has indeed blessed us. And so what we invite you to do is you can either send something into the church via the address that is at the bottom of the screen, or you can securely donate on our website using Vanco. And so we appreciate any gift that you can give, however you can give, as we look to be a church that continues to share the love and light of Christ to those who are in need. And as we give our thanks this week for all that God has given us. Thank you, friends. Final thoughts. Thankfulness. It is coming a special day next month. But a life of thankfulness, well, that's different than just one day, isn't it? Jesus calls us to be a people that not only experience God's grace, but a people that are grateful and full of thanksgiving for that grace. So friends, as we go this week into a world that has a hard time saying thank you, may we be a people that through our words and through our actions can show God just how grateful and thankful we are for having experienced God's grace. Amen. It's a bomb in Gilead. Thank you.